we just get CBR power? Is that what's happening here? We're here to uh, do some performance stuff to the CRF. It's gone interestingly. Um, to give you a quick recap of where we're at, we did some airbox stuff. Opened it up, put a high flow filter. We've done like a full exhaust. We've taken off all the emission stuff. Put a set of CBR 300R cams in, PowerVision 3. Got the bike custom tuned. We went on a trip and it did not run right. It was fixed in Vegas and it's been fixed since then. Well, honestly, it's been pretty good. It just didn't make quite the power we thought it would. Two different dynos, neither one of them could really get much over the peak. Now, as bad as that sounds, this bike still is super fun. We're making 90 to 100% more power at a certain point the RPM range, I think there's a point where it's around 12 horsepower where it's at 22 now. We've got a very good flat power curve. Our buddy Rivet actually did some cool math and I think we had an overall 37% gain. So we have done good. It's just, we didn't get that top end bang. I mean, if you look here, here's a graph of where we're at and here's a CBR 300. We actually are beating it in places, but the CBR has got this just way more power. Why aren't we there? Now I got talking with some people that know more than I do. One of them was Ari from Revzilla. I mean, he's been in several publications. You guys know him. We've got a whole fun package he sent me that we're gonna be messing with in the future. For those of you on Patreon, if you haven't known what that is, that's it. But I asked Ari, I said, Ari, you've raced these engines, you know these engines. What's going on here? Did I miss something? I've got the CBR cams. Is there some other element in there? I mean, he agreed there should not be a physical motor element different in there. He called it out. He said, it's gotta be the air box. It's something going on with the air box. We had another uh, person in our Patreon who's figured it out now. It's the air boot. The air boot is completely different in this bike versus the CBR. I like the airflow diagram for it too. I mean, you actually like it or are you just laughing at my drawing? No, I like it. Snorkels is what we have. And this is what the CBR has. We've got a big old long boy and a little short guy. These are actually pretty good for low end power, for torque. Problem is once you get over a certain RPM, they tend not to work as well. I think that's why you're noticing stock, modified, we're 24 horsepower. So that means we just have hit the limit. We can only flow so fast. Short ones like the CBR have are much better for high end top RPM power. These just flow much, much better. Also on the CBR one, we've got much better rounded edges here. This is better where this has got a little bit of a lip, but not much. This is a lot more tumbling air, especially at higher RPMs. It's not a complete trade off of just more power, almost certainly are gonna be trading some bottom end power for some top end power. In the perfect world, we have both. You know, in the perfect world, we build a, a movable, retractable one. It does sort of stink because this bike, it, it is fun having that low and rompy power this thing has. I've gotten used to that. However, looking at how much potential top end we could have there, I still think it's worth pursuing. At the end of the day, this still won't be 100% CBR. Uh, the CBR does have a different air box. It's fully optimized for that. And we've got one optimized for something else. So we may not, you know, who knows? There's several other elements in there. I think it also should be worth noting that this bike in its current state is kind of kicking and we may be screwing that up. It is fun. Like I said, I, I've already explained, I'm gonna deep dive and go deeper and deeper into it because that's what I want to do. But I think if you look at the mods that are on it currently and the setup it's in with the tune, which is available to uh, Patreons, it's kind of a fun setup. Having said that, let's check out that CBR air boot thing. How convenient. All right, I actually have two things in here to show you. One, a part we bought that you can get commercially online. This is like a 3D printed intake. It's actually kind of cool because this is like a two pieces. You should be able to just insert it in and do it. But literally this whole thing is made out of some kind of plastic. It's brittle. Talking to our boy Rivet who knows all about the stuff. He says this will not last. It'll break. Don't buy that. Here's our CBR one. Apparently you just flip this thing upside down and it fits how the CRF one fits. We are going to have to fully pull the air box though to pull this in. Let's just dig in. <laughs> some dirt in here. There you oh. go. Got enough, oh, oh. enough slack yeah. here. Don't need to fully remove the battery box, but we need it to be loose. Obviously my undertail is gonna look different from an OEM one. If you've been following along, you know, we completely built this out of a trash can. We have all the bolts undone. We're just undoing the actual clamp holding the boot to the throttle body. Yeah, we're off the throttle body. This off of the side here. I just think you just shove it down like that. Like, oh, yeah. Breather's still hooked on. It's like, you know, yanking an engine out. There's always one or two things oh, you forgot oh, about. Oh. Hey. 
Look at that. Bah, 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 bah. Matt, tell them about our Discord. Discord people, tell us about your Discord. Plug, plug, plug the Discord. Tell them join the Discord. <laughs> Come on, man. No, no one, be quiet. No one say There's a lot of cool people in here. <laughs> that, that does sum it up pretty good. That is what happens in Discord quite regularly. Anyways. Oh my god, you can see the other... Come here, you can see the other part of it. It's all the way to here. It's right there. Oh my gosh, oh. It was from here to where my other hand is right here. I'm gonna try to break this glue up here at the top. Twist and pry on it here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's offensive. My god, look at that thing. <laughs> The throttle body on our CRF is a 40 millimeter. If we check the inside of both of these, uh, basically around 39 and a half. They both check out at the same. We flip over our CVR when I check it here on the end. We're actually up to about 40 and a half. It's roughly the same. This is where it's kind of crazy. About 35 and a half. Uh, so we are shrinking. We're shrinking. Yes, this may be long, but it's not wide, you know? <laughs> Which one do you prefer? I'd love to just bang this in there, but here's another thing we've ran into is that this lip is where it goes in here to the air box. And on the CBR one, this ring is thicker. We're around 50 millimeters for the hole. 61, 62 millimeters uh, this hole is. So we need to basically enlarge that hole. It's gonna be a little tight in some spots. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to so I'll up on here and make a bunch of sort of marks of that size. We're gonna dremel it out. I'm just gonna try to open this hole up and get it big enough that that can fit. I'm kind of running into some interesting things here. We have lips on both sides of this boot that needs to sort of overlap onto this plastic. And so if I cut this hole perfectly round, you know, you think right here, I'm basically at the limit already. I don't want to get completely to the wall. I'm already really close to it. Same kind of over here. We're kind of writing this stuff. I've got a little more room kind of on these sides, but you kind of, I think you can start seeing there that I've sort of gone a little oblong with the hole. And hopefully the mercy of it being rubber will kind of work itself out. I also put on one of those little, um, little scotch bright pads there and it went real slow around it. This is one of the real soft ones. That helped to kind of smooth it all out a little bit. Hitting it in some directions and some it's tight. It's close enough, I think it'll kind of work out. I'm just gonna kind of do a dry run. I think I can just do, it's almost like putting on a tire. You need to get one of the little lips in and it'll kind of work it in. Ah, there we go. All right. All right, look at that. Stall this now just to see that everything fits well. I got a screwdriver in here right now that's just holding in where a bolt should go, small screwdriver, just because I got to really keep this thing hunked up forward. I think what it is, is even with turning this thing 180 degrees around upside down, it's close, but still not a perfect push to each other. The top kind of wants to pull back. Basically, I found is you almost got to push down on the throttle body a little bit while you're pushing this on. I even had to take a flathead screwdriver and kind of give it a little bit of a force up on the lip to get over it. It's basically forcing the boot just a little bit further over than it would normally go. It will seal, it will work, but hey, it's good. The little resonator will still fit over here. There's, it's got the same amount of room as it had before. Clean it up real good, and then we'll glue it. She's all cleaned up and wiped down. I can't really show this on film. It's kind of hard to show it. There's a little nub. Yeah, I kind of see it right there. There's a little nub. Normally that's squared off and comes out pretty far. I cut the edge off and rounded it over. If one you're in there dremeling, go ahead and knock that down too. This has also been cleaned off. There's no more WD-40 on this. Permatex black adhesive. I'm sure someone will tell me that's the wrong one. I'll give it a couple twists just to make sure it's got it in there good. My little alignment marks. Now I'm just gonna run a line around the outside of it for good measure. <laughs> Whee! All right, she's all stuck it it on there. Can y'all see that? This needs 24 hours to uh, to dry. The next day. 24 hours later, she's all vulcanized up. Looks good. Should be nice and sealed. I'll go ahead and pop on the resonator because I don't think you can slip this on after the fact. I've also oiled the filters up, gave them a clean, quick re-oiling. Let's pop it on. Twist. All right. I've just shoved a small screwdriver through the hole in the air box right here. The bottom is all the way on, 
and the top just needs to come over just a little bit. Um, and you see if you just take a, a flathead and kind of, you know, be careful with this because you are pushing against this piece of rubber, but if we push this down, I was able to get this on before. At the same time, if you push down on the throttle body, don't like press onto this, the injector. So you want to kind of push right here and here. Now they're lined up good. I right, know this is probably in the way of the camera. I'm just tightening up the main clamp here. And while tightening this up, I'm putting just a little bit of pressure on it and there we go, it's held on there. I can push on this, it won't come off. So it's not like it's gonna pop back off this lip later. If I take a dead blow like this, just uh, put some pressure against this air box, see if I can't hold it in place. I've got my knee against it. Oh, we're doing all kinds of fun stuff here. Yes. All right. <laughs> I definitely put a lot more tension against this boot. So if you're in a situation though, where you'd like wedge this on and you could like bang it back off by hand, I'd be like, no, 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 I don't trust that. This is on there now, so tight. Now it doesn't move at all. Awesome. If you haven't seen the original video where we did all the intakes, the, the first round of intake stuff, DNA sent us this filter. And just to give it extra little help, I cut this out. This is just a piece of uni sort of pre-filter that goes in front of it. I can say having just pulled this air box out, cleaning it all out, and we remember we've been through the desert, lots of sand, as well as other muddy environments and whatnot. Very clean behind the filter. I, Botless from what I could tell. What's nice about this whole step too, it's all cleanable, reusable, not just a throwaway paper filter. You sandwich this little piece of pre-filter between these other two pieces. Yeah, you gotta force it in there like so. These screws, since they're basically like a sheet metal style screw and they're cutting their own threads, we don't wanna just start spinning them. We wanna spin them backwards to start slowly until we feel them fall into their old threads. Sometimes you get a nice audible noise Sometimes it just kind of falls in and you'll be able to feel it with your fingers pretty easy. Certainly don't need to be super tight, these screws. Before I add the rest of the body work, let's go ahead and start the bike real quick, make sure everything's happy. There's the fuel pump, injector going. It seems to be running normal. There's no weird bike check engine lights. It's not making me think the tune's way off or anything. I was trying to, you know, kind of pop it, rev it, and slap the rest of the bodywork on, make it look like a bike again. <laughs> There's only one thing left to do. Let's get it out on the road and see how she performs. First things first is we just need to make sure the bike is running good. We can't just go full rip on it. We're up to temperature here. This is ring 191 right there. Nothing sounds unusual about it. And you know, we obviously we don't have like a wide band O2 sensor in it, or you know, we, we're kind of having to go by sound here, feel is the bike running really bad. Because if it's way off, we really shouldn't ride it. Let's just listen to it uh, revving here. No, no bike likes this, but it's, it's handling it well. It's not stalling. Here comes the truck down here. You think they're gonna kick me out? What's up? Oh, how you doing? How you doing? You looking frantic? No, I'm just, I'm just riding around. Where are you living? You, you want me to leave? Yeah, I'll go. Where do you live in? Where I live? Yes. The moon. I live in outer space. <laughs> Where do I live? Anyway, we were gonna we were gonna take it slow to start, but you know. I had to have a little fun with those guys. <laughs> Nothing noticeable at lower, just cruising speeds. That all feels normal. No, we are kicking and banging, no hiccuping there. I think there's a little bit of intake noise there. That's fun, kind of roll into it. seem anything unusual again as far as tuning is concerned. I think we're ready to rip it. I think this thing's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
I, this tune on here might be okay for it. Now that we lose a bunch of bottom end, the stock, if you just full throttle it first, it would do like an inch high wheelie. It does like an inch high wheelie. After a mod, it'll stand straight up. Did we mess that up? No, that will go right up and over if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> what about third gear? Before I could do it, but it was so hard. Let's see if this thing will pull up now in third any better. Okay, that's kind of helpful. It's just doing that. Okay. Yo, I think we have something there. <laughs> by animals. By the way, if you're seeing this video and you're like, Jake, what's with your bike? It's just, it's, it's always running so bad. No, it was, it was one time it was running bad. It happened to be on a trip that I made multiple videos on. It was actually fixed while on that trip. So uh, don't, don't worry, it, it, it's fine now. If you do want the fixed tune, which was done by DinoJet themselves, I do have that available. You have to be on Patreon. It's only like a dollar a month to do it. Maybe if you just did it for the one month to get the tune, that would help me out because I mean, I had to go to Vegas to get that tune. I live in Texas. The Patreons will always get these videos earlier. They're like a video or two ahead on average. They get an uncensored version of these videos. It's also ad free. And it's this much longer without this ad in it. Like they don't have, they don't see this ad. What's the conclusion? Should you do this to your bike? If you do like all the mods I've done, this thing is pretty woken up right now. Uh, I'm liking it. We gotta get an Instagram photo of the bike if we can get the reflection. This isn't, it's not, this is kind of cloudy. I don't know if it'll work, but it's always a good shot. Anyways, I'll see y'all in the next video. <laughs>